you finally got the uh, bringing habitat home videos onto YouTube. So if people are interested in bringing native plants to their home garden, they could uh, see the YouTube footage. I don't know if you have that available so that you could post it in the chat. Yeah, I, I'll post. I'll find the link and I'll post it in the chat. Thank you. And also um, the weed management areas of Santa Barbara County and Ventura County are trying to get um, a map of uh, the weeds of each of their counties organized. And they're going to be, they're doing this in uh, association with uh, the California Invasive Plant Council. And they're, um, they're asking for, for help from anybody uh, to come and um, tell where weeds are in, in the counties. So if you want to help with that, you could contact your weed management area, which are both under the um, county ag commissioner's office. Okay, I'm done. Uh, so I just posted the link to the bringing Habitat Home uh, seminar series. Um, and so if anyone wants to check that out, uh, that's on uh, on our YouTube, uh, YouTube page. Okay. Um, and so I'd like to introduce David. Uh, so David Torfe uh, is a longtime board member of CMPSCI and he's the, he, where he's served as the hike coordinator. Um, he's a certified California field botanist um, and received an undergraduate degree uh, in environmental studies. Um, and he's been leading uh, botany hikes for CMPS uh, CI since 2007. Um, and he also is uh, you know, a very knowledgeable naturalist and knows a lot about um, the local birds and butterflies and plant, you know, plants overall. Um, and so we haven't been having any in-person hikes due to COVID, but David has kindly offered uh, to lead us on a virtual hike of uh, the settling farms uh, tonight. So please welcome David. Thank you, Kip. This will be a virtual hike around the Ventura settling ponds. The Ventura settling ponds are sandwiched between the Ventura Harbor Surfers Knoll Beach and the Santa Clara River Estuary and Harbor Boulevard in Ventura. <clears throat> the wetlands support a large array of birds, small mammals, amphibians, reptiles, and insects. Pictured is a bird called a bush tit, a very small gray bird about four inches long on myoporum or ngao tree, or ngai, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, but let's just say myoporum. Uh, it covers, I mean, it provides a lot of cover and food for numerous bird species. And here's a close up of the uh, fringed flowers that look delicate. On the right, you can see an aerial photo showing the ponds. Uh, this is part of the Ventura wastewater treatment plant. And uh, sometime prior to the 1990s, they, start, they decided to make it an ecological preserve. So it has coastal sage scrub habitat, riparian forest habitat, and freshwater marsh habitat with a little bit of coastal dunes. On the far left, you can see what they call the bone pond because it's shaped like a bone. Uh, in the middle is the Snoopy pond and on the right is the Lucy pond. As soon as you enter from the pedestrian gate on Angler Court off of Spinnaker, which is just south of the Ventura Harbor, you'll see saltbush and coyote brush. 
So on the left is a picture of big salt bush, Atroplex lentiformis. It grows in dry open areas. Coyote brush also does grow in dry open areas. It's flowering in this photo. The, uh, the photo on the left was taken in late January. The photo on the right was taken in mid-November. So that gives you an idea of the phenology or uh, plant flowering and so on, um, time of this plant, the coyote brush. Along the edge of the ponds, the freshwater marsh habitat includes western goldenrod or golden top, Euthamia occidentalis, which is in the foreground, and California bulrush, Shonoplectus californicus, which is in the background of the left photo. There are large amounts of these species, especially the California bulrush. So it's considered a dominant species here. On the right, we have the weedy but native Western ragweed, Ambrosia psilostachia, which is widespread on the margins of the pond just outside where the California bulrush grows. A lot of people are allergic to the Western ragweed, unfortunately. On the left, we have more uh, of the California bulrush pictured, and it provides cover for rails, which are small chicken-like birds, marsh wrens, American coots, and various ducks. In the middle photo, we see California buckwheat Areogonum fasciculatum in the foreground with California bulrush in the background. These are taken by the Snoopy pond, which is the middle pond, the largest one also. The right photo shows <clears throat> The uh, island, I'm not sure if that's the island or not. Um, photos of everybody's in the way, but um, there is an island on the right of this photo, Snoopy Pond, which has an array of herons and egrets perched on it on the uh, Myoporum, usually. A woodland of mostly a royal willow, Salix lasiolepis, covers a large area of a few hundred feet just south of the entrance. Pampa grass, Cordideria celloana on the right, is a problem invasive on the, uh, some of the shores of the pond. You've probably seen this in many areas. It's not as bad as uh, Arundo donax, which is giant reed, but uh, it's a pretty bad invasive. Here's another photo on the left uh, of the margin of the pond looking south, <clears throat> Snoopy Pond, at hoary nettle, or giant nettle also it's called, Urtica dioica, subspecies Holocericea, with California bulrush behind it. Don't touch the nettle. Uh, it has little barbs or hairs that will get into your skin, and it hurts for a few hours. On the right is a close up of the giant nettle or hoary nettle. A 
another photo of Myoporum lietum is on the left. It forms groves of small trees along the water's edge in some areas, providing shelter for waterfowl. It's part of the marsh, freshwater marsh vegetation. On the right, we have something that's pretty pervasive in a lot of areas. It, it prefers open, disturbed areas, and it does attract insect pollinators. It's a weedy native telegraph weed, Heterotheca grandiflora, and it blooms year round. It gets to be about three feet tall. On the left, we have a newly advancing and dreaded invasive for Ventura County called stinkwort, Dictricria graviolens. In this photo, we don't see the yellow small sunflower-like flowers or daisy-like flowers. Instead, we see the dried up plants, which look like small Christmas trees uh, going to seed. In the middle photo, at the west edge of the Lucy Pond, which is the easternmost pond, in the shade is wild celery, Apium graviolens. It needs to be actually in the water. So its roots and the bottom of the stems are actually in the water at the edge of the pond. Notice how uh, it looks like celery. It's in the uh, APAC genus, the carrot family. On the right is a picture of the sign for the Snoopy Pond. You're looking west across the Snoopy Pond in this photo, the largest pond. Here we have California bulrush and hoary nettle again. I probably should have uh, left out the extra photo, but this is a nice photo. On the right, we have another problem in invasive, which you've probably seen in some areas. Salt cedar or tamarisk, Tamarix ramosissima. It has pink tiny blossoms on the end of its stalks or stems and delicate foliage. But it can grow into 40 to 50 foot tall trees if left to develop. I had to do a little bit of uh, checking of my own on the site to figure out exactly which species of buckwheat I was looking at here um, after the fact. It looks like <clears throat> more native to the dune and sand habitat close to Surfers Knoll Beach at the west edge of the Ventura Settling Ponds would be the uh, sea cliff coastal buckwheat, which is Eriogonum parvifolium. It has a greener leaf with a uh, contrasting white underside. And it's a slightly smaller and more spatulate leaf shaped sort of like a little shovel. But the, the uh, 
coastal wild buckwheat, which used to be called ashy leaf buckwheat for obvious reasons, has a, a more um, obovate leaf that is gray green on both sides and has uh, hairs. It's found in the drier, sandy areas away from the pond edges. And I'm, I'm guessing that it was part of a restoration effort. Um, so it was probably planted there because it, it probably doesn't naturally occur in that area. It's a more inland uh, dry slope plant from what I've seen. On the right, we have a somewhat rare plant. Uh, it's Abronia meridima, or red sand verbena. This is at the west end of the bone pond, the westernmost pond, the coastal dune habitat. It has magenta, uh, or deep reddish, blossoms or flowers inflorescence uh, is a technical term a close relative is also found there and that's uh, abronia i believe umbilatum which has more of a pink inflorescence the leaves are like a thick pancake so it does have a nickname of uh, pancake um, plant or something similar to that. In the shady areas on the south side of the Snoopy Pond, under willows and cottonwoods, um, mugwort grows. It likes the moister shady areas. And it also can grow near poison oak uh, typically, but I didn't see too much poison oak in that particular area. The poison oak that I saw was on the north side of the pond. It's a native uh, and the Native Americans use it as an antidote for poison oak. and still do. Castor bean, Ricinus communis, is a highly poisonous invasive, if you eat it, that is. <clears throat> uh, it's the source of the dreaded poison ricin, the white, whitish powder. And uh, I'm still not sure how castor oil was processed so that it wouldn't be poisonous from the castor bean plant. Remember castor oil? On the right, we have something in the pea family that's an invasive. White sweet clover, Melilotus albus. This is at the southeast corner of the Snoopy Pond, near where some tree swallow boxes, nesting boxes have been uh, installed over the years, attracting tree swallows. Another common invasive that you've seen a lot over the hillsides and along waterways is summer mustard, Hirschfeldia in Canna, in the mustard family. Seems to be hard to eradicate it. In the center photos, we have marsh baccarus or baccarus glutinosa. It's in the same genus and genus is a subset of a plant family or uh, an organism's family. Um, it's in the same genus, believe it or not, as 
coyote brush. Although the leaves of coyote brush look like a small oval. And this is a long lanceolate uh, leaf. The uh, mule fat is also in, in this genus. And it has a somewhat more similar leaf to the marsh baccarus. Mule fat is a very typical wetland plant. I don't have a photo here of it, but uh, you can tell that it's mule fat because the willow, uh, the leaf looks like a willow leaf. However, the veins are parallel to the leaf edge. On the right, we have the poison oak I was talking about earlier, growing in the shaded woodlands of willow and cottonwoods north of the Snoopy Pond. And maybe I should correct myself. It, this says it was also south of the Snoopy Pond. So uh, although I couldn't remember that, uh, apparently it was south of the Snoopy Pond. There's a close up of the uh, inflorescence of the poison oak in the upper right. As you know, poison oak is uh, something that causes a you know, bad rash in a lot of people. Most Native Americans, however, do not get the rash. Differing from the wetland plants is purple sage. It likes sunny open locations away from water. So there's some of that on the west end of the Snoopy Pond and east end of the Bone Pond. It's very aromatic, which is typical of the mint family that it's in. The mint family includes uh, plants like white whorehound, which you've probably heard of. Cough drops were made of this and may still be being made of it. Um, mint, uh, oh, spearmint and uh, mint that you put in food are in the same family. Also rosemary and thyme. On the right, we have uh, beach fir sage, or beach fir for short, Ambrosia chamasonis. And that's in the dune habitat at the west end of the Bone Pond, right near Surfers Knoll Beach. You can also find it on Surfers Knoll Beach, closer to the ocean. Now, I forgot to mention on the right photo that purple sage is scientific name is salvia leucophila. Salvia are the sages. The most common willow that you find at the Ventura Settling Ponds is by far the arroyo willow or Salix lesiolepis. I believe we saw a photo of that earlier. This is narrow leaf willow, which is found in smaller amounts on the margins of the wetlands. Salix exigua, narrow leaf willow. There's a close up of its inflorescence or flower in the upper right. The narrow leaf is because it has narrow leaves. You can see from the photos. On the south edge of the Snoopy Pond, there's California Everlasting. It can be as tall as five feet. It's dried up in this photo, which was taken in November. It's bloom time had ended already. 
It's in the sunflower family. It's Pseudonephalium californica. And some people say that uh, the stems and leaves smell like maple syrup or vanilla. Coastal wild buckwheat in the second photo from the left has the ash colored leaves, uh, Areogonum scenarium. We saw that earlier. This is just a review photo. Ho hopefully people can um, learn a little bit if they're not familiar with the native plants of this area. An attractive plant is in the third set of photos from the left. It has these um, maroon colored flowers. Salt marsh fleabane, also in the sunflower family. Fluchia odorata. It likes to grow right at the water's edge. Very striking blossoms. Here we have another invasive on the far right, Carpobotus edulis. Carpobotus chilensis, a closely related species, is also found here. And sometimes it's hard to, to distinguish between the two because uh, Carpobotus edulis sometimes will have yellow flowers like the chilensis. This usually has pink flowers. And freeway ice plant was planted as a ground cover along freeways and other areas long ago and is spread all over the place. And there have been a lot of uh, restoration efforts by um, nonprofit organizations um, to eradicate it at the Ventura settling ponds and replace it with other natives, I mean, with natives, period, because it's not a native. That's in the uh, dune habitat, the west end of the bone pond. On the right is an attractive white blossomed plant called heliotrope or Chinese pusley. The scientific name is Heliotropum carassivicum for variety oculatum. That's a mouthful. Here uh, in the cent center right or bottom right, we have Solanum douglasii, green spot nightshade. It has white flowers. The plant is poisonous to eat. The berries are a, a dark purplish black color, round, about a half inch diameter, or almost that much. And uh, all parts of the plant are poisonous. This is typical of many of the nightshade family members that grow naturally in our area, but not all of them. Fortunately for us, things like tomatoes, bell peppers, um, and eggplant are not poisonous. They're in the nightshade family. In the upper right, you can see the flowers close up of green spot nightshade and the exerted stigma. On the far left, we have Chaparral Mallow, Malacothamnus fasciculatus, variety fasciculatus, with its pink bowl shaped flowers that you see a close up of in the center top. It's in the Mallow family, Malvaceae. In 
the center bottom is Nibla, a genus of lichen that grows on willows around the ponds. Now, lichens are not um, flowering plants, but this is so prevalent, this lichen, that uh, we thought it was a good idea to include it. On the right, another nightshade family member, tree tobacco, Nicotiana glauca. In the late 1700s, probably with um, Padre Serra's group that came from South America, tree tobacco was introduced to California. It's spread like crazy, unfortunately, since then. And uh, it's found all over the place in disturbed areas and elsewhere, including the Ventura settling ponds. Hummingbirds do like the tubular yellow flowers. All parts of the plants, however, are poisonous. Um, probably not to hummingbirds, but uh, to people. In waterways and ponds, you'll often see this European non-native called watercress or Roripa nasturtium hyphen aquaticum. It needs to be constantly in water. So um, you don't find it very far from the water's edge if it is at the edge. The uh, watercrest photo here is at the southeast corner of the Snoopy Pond, which is a central pond. The Lucy Pond is the far eastern pond. Here is the sign for it in a, a partial view of the Lucy Pond. On the right, we have an invasive called Garland Daisy. If you know where Arroyo Verde Park is in Ventura, uh, you can see it covering the slopes there in the uh, mid to late spring. It gets to be about three to four feet high. It's either white with a yellow center or uh, all yellow. Glebionis coronaria is its scientific name. It's from Europe. Garland daisy in the sunflower family. We have had hikes in the past and, and even to the Ventura settling ponds. Pictured here is a hike we had in 2018 to the Ventura settling ponds. And in the center is Jimson weed, Datura reitii, also in the nightshade family. Poisonous. It's psychotropic. However, those who try to get its hallucinogenic effects usually end up in the hospital. I, I'm not sure how the Native Americans prepared it so that it didn't affect them adversely when they use it for visions. On the right is a close-up of the giant funnel-shaped jimson weed flowers and its leaves. I sure do hope that soon the pandemic will be over and we can have hikes again like we used to have regularly. We have usually one hike per month or more, usually in the spring, two hikes per month. And I'm hoping we can get back to it at some time in the future. Thanks for watching. And many thanks to Catherine Perman for taking photos and for Connie Rutherford for taking photos and um, 
for to Connie for uh, helping set this up because my computer at home is not set up with uh, a camera and a microphone to do Zoom. So I'm using hers. And at this point, I'm ending the slideshow and opening it up for questions. Yes, Nancy. Yes, David, hi. Very enjoyable. And I loved all the photos. And is this going to be posted on the uh, CNPS uh, website that we could uh, use this or refer to it in the future? Uh, that's a good question for Kip. Kip um, is our president. Kip, can you answer that? Yeah, so if, if it's okay with you, David, we can post it to our YouTube page. Um, yeah. We don't have a very active website right now, so uh, the best place for that would be our YouTube. But um, if, that's, if that's okay with David, we'll put it up there and then we can make a Facebook announcement. Um, and also I linked, uh, I linked to our YouTube uh, page at the beginning um, for that Habitat, Bring Habitat Home seminar. So that's a, if you want to find that page now, you can go up to the top of the chat. It'll be there. Yeah, I, I would welcome it being on YouTube. That would yeah. be educational for people who are interested. Lots of people go out there, especially the birders. So it's, I happen to live nearby. So it, it, this is a great piece of information to have. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Uh, so we got a question in the chat. Uh, Nina Danzis wants to know if sourgrass is native. Hi, Nina, how are you doing? Um, sourgrass is not native. Uh, the scientific name is Oxalis pest capre, and it's from Europe, but it's spread all over the United States. It tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Uh, Leslie, did you have a question? No, I just got hung up on some bank business, so I'm just now signing in. Thanks. Oh, I see. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Any more uh, questions? Um, I got, I got one for you, David and Kip. When, when might be the next time, once we get all our COVID shots that you might do uh, another field trip out here? I think overall, it's a little bit hard to say at this point um, when we'll start having in-person field trips again. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that, you know, there'll be enough uh, vaccine rollout, you know, by the summer um, but as soon as, as soon as, basically, as soon as uh, sort of we get guidance from the county that it's, um, you know, safe because there's been enough vaccinations um, that people can start uh, safely doing, you know, I think we'll probably be on the more cautious side. So when we see like more indoor things opening up, um, you know, regularly and it's due to vaccines, not due to just changes in case numbers, um, then I think we'll start having in-person field trips again. And then it'd be up to David or, you know, from there, you know, when the next time there'd be a field trip in that, in that area. Good. Nancy, I can make it a point to uh, try to have one this year if the pandemic allows us uh, okay. to start having them again. That'd be good. Yes. Uh, Cody Swanson has a question. Um, they wanted to know when uh, California Everlasting blooms. Uh, Cody, I'll have to look that up and get back to you, but it blooms before November. I know that much. Um, probably in the summertime. A lot of the sunflower family members bloom in the summertime. Uh, so a good place to look for that kind of information is Calflora. Um, and so I'll search there now and I can tell you. But if you have questions like that in the future, uh, Calflora, um, which is a nonprofit uh, that maintains a 
database of all the California plants is a really good place to look for quick information. And it shows the bloom period for Pseudonephalium californicum as January through July. David, um, yeah. where can I find everlasting on the ponds? I didn't quite get that. I probably wasn't paying attention. On, on the um, southern edge of the Snippy Pond. Um, okay. Uh, about 300 feet west of that um, bench that's there for pedestrians. Okay. Okay. And you can you can find it sometimes in other locations, but that's where I saw the most of it. But it won't be blooming until next fall or summer. January. Uh, January. Okay. We'll, we'll go look. January to July. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Dexter. This is Leslie, and I just wondered, since you are um, recording this session, is it going to be archived, or where is it going to be accessible? It'll be on YouTube. Uh, our our YouTube website of uh, California Native Plant Society Channel Islands chapter. Okay. And I'll, I'll repost a link to the, our YouTube uh, right now. Thank you. So I just posted a link to our YouTube in uh, in the chat. And that's a new thing. We just got this page up um, basically last month with uh, the seminar information. So uh, hopefully in the future, we'll start having more um, of our monthly talks recorded and available there and other, uh, and other events as well. Don't miss our... Uh... March 16th talk, uh, Kip already mentioned it, but it should be good. Okay. Sweet. Any more questions? No. Nope. Thanks a lot, David. <laughs> You're Look welcome. forward to going out with you for better yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. it, it was excellent. Fun. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, David. And thank Take you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you, David. Right. Thank you. See you March 16th. March 16th, <laughs> day before Patty's Day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. Great. That was great. Presentation. Oh, you're welcome.